Okay. Hi, all. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to have a group of folks here to have us go over a research project that many of you have participated in along the way. Um, so I'm excited to, to hear today from Bukola and Rocio, if we can have Rocio join here, um, of uh, uh, research on uh, the theory of change that we are moving forward with um, in the education, we can meet in the education space. Um, so this meeting is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel if you would like to not have your face um, be recorded and posted on YouTube, feel free to turn your camera off. Um, and like all meetings, this is under the Universal Code of Conduct, which I'm sure you are all familiar with by now. But in case you haven't looked at it recently, let me paste it in the chat, except now I can't find it. There is a link to the Universal Code of Conduct. Um, so for those of you who are just joining, please go ahead and share your name and um, who you well, what uh, Wikimedia organization you're representing and where you're joining us from, if you would like to, in the chat. Um, so I wanted to start off, I, I guess I should introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I am Leanna Davis. I'm um, joining you today from California in the United States, and um, I am the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group, um, and this is one of our EduWiki Knowledge Showcase events. Um, I wanted to give a brief update as well on the EduWiki conference, which many of you were able to join us um, last year for our conference. Um, we had hoped to do one in 2024, but um, something has come up and we can no longer host the conference in Rwanda, which is where we were hoping to host it. And so we are seeking an alternative host and um, I'll be sending out some uh, a message to the list in the next week or two, and we're probably going to have the next conference in 20, early 2025 um, as we try to find sort of an alternative place and make sure we can address the visa challenges that we had last time so that we can make sure that we actually bring, um, bring folks to the conference. So look for an email with more updates um, from that in uh, the coming weeks. So um, with that, I want to turn it over to uh, Bukola and Rocio, who are going to present today. Um, let me share their slide deck here. Um, get the right tab. All right. Okay. Rocio and hey. Nicola, feel free to take over. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, thank you, Yana, and hi, Edu Wikimedians. I hope you can all hear me well, loud and clear. Uh, so welcome to the Edu Wiki Knowledge Showcase, and uh, please get comfortable and like uh, Liana had said earlier, please do well to introduce yourself in the chat. And um, while we wait for more members to join uh, the call, please uh, just get comfortable, try as much as possible to make this interactive and enjoyable for everyone uh, on the call today. And uh, that takes me to uh, the title of the presentation today. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so uh, today our knowledge showcase center on the Wikimedia and Education Theory of Change, uh, TOC reports, and my colleague Rocio will share a link uh, to the detailed reports on Meta in the chat. Uh, and uh, we hope, like I said, to make this session as interactive and enjoyable as possible. Thank you. Uh, next slide. Okay, now uh, to the introduction of presenter. Uh, like you all know, for those who don't know, uh, my name is Bukola James and I reside in Abuja, Nigeria. I also um, serve as the liaison 
uh, for Sub-Saharan Africa on the Let's Connect Fair Learning Working Group and uh, as the community coordinator for Code for Africa with the Media and Resident Initiative. Uh, specifically for this presentation, I am acting in my capacity as the research facilitator uh, for the EduWiki uh, user group uh, theory of change. And now I'll hand over the virtual mic to my colleague, Rocio, for our introduction. Over to you, Rocio. Thank you, Bukola. Uh, first of all, uh, many thanks to everyone who is joining us uh, and sharing with you today, uh, with us today, sorry. And uh, sorry about my English. It's something isn't clear or anything, you can just ask me and interrupt me. I don't have any trouble with that. Um, I am Rocio Aravena. Um, I work uh, too as a liaison, uh, but for the Latin America and the Caribbean on the Let's Connect team, um, just like Bucola. Um, also, I currently collaborate as a researcher for uh, Wikimedia Chile, where I served as education officer for over four years until 2023. And together with Bukola, uh, I am a researcher for the theory of change. So again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Bukola. Okay, um, thank you, Rocio. And uh, next slide, please, Liana. Okay, uh, so uh, before I go into today's agenda, uh, I would also like to acknowledge uh, the support from the key stakeholders who had made this research possible. Uh, specifically, I want to thank uh, the Wikimedia Foundation for the fund support. Uh, through the Wikimedia Education Foundation, uh, US and Canada, in collaboration with uh, the Wikipedia and Education User Group. And uh, also uh, acknowledge the invaluable contributions of many EduWiki program leaders and certified RWIC trainers, whose voices led to this research output. So uh, I would say, uh, let's give everyone on this call uh, a virtual round of applause. I would like to see uh, the virtual round of applause using uh, the reaction button. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, so going on to today's agenda, uh, as you can see on the screen, we will we'll start with uh, the findings from the COC phase one, and then we'll explore the theory of change and then we we'll discuss the development process. We also uh, talk about the, pro the main problems that we identified uh, from our focus group discussions with the EduWiki members, and also would we'll outline. Okay, and I was following the comments in the chat. Sorry for that. <laughs> and I'll also um, outline the key principles and objectives for our expected impacts and they will present an overview of the question, the processes, and the systemization of the learnings that we had uh, 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 that we had uh, received over time. And they will dwell into the environmental analysis and mitigation strategies. And then this uh, presentation will conclude uh, with a feedback uh, from everyone on this call, and also just trying to identify the next step uh, that we hope to take from here. Um, next slide. Okay, so uh, talking about the findings from the TOC phase one. Now, uh, it, it wouldn't make sense if we just dive into uh, the second phase of the research without giving you a bit of a background as to what's played out in the first phase of the research. And also before uh, highlighting the findings from the first phase of the research, I will give a bit of a background about the EduWiki community. 
So uh, I find it very interesting to uh, let you know that the EduWiki community is a cornerstone in most of the Wikimedia's education-related programs. And uh, it has tried for over two decades uh, with a significant milestone being the formalization of the EduWiki user group in 2018. Now, uh, this group under its volunteer-run structure has been instrumental in linking with the media with its educational initiatives, uh, achieving notable objectives in line with the movement strategy recommendation, as, uh, such as diversified contribution, uh, contributors, demographics, and also um, identifying impactful uh, educational programs and um, enhance, enhancing uh, user pedagogical experience on uh, Wikimedia platform. Uh, now, over the years, the EduWiki user group has also champion, championed uh, collaboration uh, by partnering with the Wikimedia Foundation education team, uh, education program leaders, and volunteers on various uh, community delivery programs and opportunities. Now, a key achievement is the marked increase in gender diversity uh, with female particip participation rising from 28.5% uh, in 2020 to 38.1% uh, in 2022. Now, this also underscores a commitment to inclusivity uh, that we drive towards uh, as part of the uh, EduWiki community uh, mission. Now, um, however, the journey hasn't been without challenges due to the uh, accelerating digital transformation, increased interest in educational programs among members of the community, and uh, global uh, trends affecting open education programs, uh, which we have also identified in the first phase of the research. Now, uh, in this uh, phase one of the research, uh, we focus on identifying the needs of the community. Uh, and from the findings, it revealed to us that um, education programs needs clearer definition. Also, we discovered uh, the necessity for enhanced uh, coordination and networking, and also the need for consistent capacity building, decision making, and the requirements to also cater uh, to the diverse needs of education program of various sizes and contexts. Now, this challenge is also highlighted the intricate nature of the EduWiki user group mission and helps to reveal the emerging patterns that may influence our future organization structure. Now, uh, based on uh, the findings, that, the need findings that we got from the first phase of the research, uh, we However, discover that a better way to meet this new challenge is that is facing the education system, not just uh, within the Wikimedia education movement because uh, it is volunteer, uh, because it is based on a volunteer run structure, but also respond to uh, the, uh, the new challenges that is facing the educational system globally. Uh, we have proposed the COC, which is the theory of change. And uh, with this brief, I would like to uh, pass it over to Rocio uh, to provide more clarity on the TOC. Over to Thank you, Rocio. Well, so uh, next slide, please, Iana. So before continuing uh, with this presentation, uh, we think it's necessary to clarify a bit about why a theory of change for the education and Wikimedia movement? And even before that, what is a theory of change? I don't know if, if uh, everybody in the, in the room is, uh, knows what a theory of change is. <clears throat> so we will give like a very, very, very broad definition uh, a theory of change is basically a method or a methodology for describing why and how an envisioned transformation is expected uh, to happen. 
through a set of interventions. So um, with that definition, we know that if we are talking about the theory of change for the EduWiki user group uh, and the education and Wikimedia movement, we are talking that uh, we want a transformation, but that uh, this transformation needs to go over some uh, necessary or, or key steps. So why a theory of change uh, for the Wikimedia and education movement? As the first phase of the research uh, shows, as Bukola said, there is a desire within the community to uh, reach more diverse contributors, uh, to fill different types of, or, of gaps. Um, there is also a desire or a need uh, to align with the current trend in the field of education and technology, right? Like to be aware about what is happening in terms of uh, research, um, in this field. Um, also, there is a big desire to respond to the global challenges in education um, and to improve, of course, the onboarding process for new users. So, as you can imagine, uh, these goals are very challenging and the current capacity of the EduWiki user group is limited for addressing all of these transformation that we expect. So for that reason, in 2023, uh, the EduWiki user group in alignment with the Wikimedia movement and strategy proposed a new organiza organizational model that we call a thematic hub, like a new infrastructure that can address these change, these changes, sorry and that represents also improvement in terms of governance, strategy, and pedagogical approach. So uh, as we know, such a transformation, such a big transformation, is not automatic, automatic and certainly cannot happen from one day to the next. So that is the reason why a methodic roadmap as a theory of change is needed. So, um, next slide, please, Liana. So, um, about the development process of this uh, second, uh, second phase of the research, um, well, the, the designing of a theory of change extended over four months. We started with uh, Bukola uh, in October 2023, and it was a result as Bukola already said, of the collaboration between the Wiki Education Foundation, the Wikimedia Education User Group, and the Wikimedia Foundation. So um, one of the things that uh, were very important for, for the Wiki community that leads this process is to ensure uh, a participant a, a participative, a representative, and also a transparent process. So that's why we developed several consultations. Probably some of the people that is here with us uh, participated into the call uh, um, for the focus group with Bukola, uh, if I am right. So we developed several consultations with uh, experienced education program leaders and affiliate members for 16 different countries. With that, uh, we cover uh, the territories from uh, East and Southeast Asia and the Pacific, Latin America and the Caribbean, the Middle East and North Africa, West Africa, North America, uh, Southeast Europe, South Asia and Central Europe. So we, we really tried uh, very hard to include or uh, to make this process a representative one. Um, at the same time, we include par included participants, uh, leaders of other Wikimedia initiatives, as well as academic and grant institutions. 
On the other hand, uh, together with this uh, consultation process, a literature review process was carried on to map uh, current trends in the field of education and open, te open technology. So through this process, nearly 70 uh, documents were reviewed and systematized using different databases and a set of recommendations were provided. So in the meta page uh, of the theory of change, at the end, you will see all of the reference with their link uh, if you want to go deeper into the, um, into the research. Thank you, Bukola. Okay, um, next slide, please. Okay, um, so uh, like Rocio have explained, uh, we had a um, series of focus group discussion and uh, the essence of having this focus group discussion is to also hear uh, from uh, the community member as to how, uh, what action we should be taking uh, uh, based on the analysis from the first phase of the research. And uh, it made uh, more sense to engage uh, in series of, fo uh, of focus group discussion. Uh, and also like um, uh, we were able to identify the core challenges faced by our community. Now uh, we try as much as possible to consolidate uh, both the need, uh, the need um, finding research the, the, the outcome of the findings from the first phase uh, with uh, the second phase of the research to really see how uh, we can um, identify or, or streamline uh, the problem that uh, they, we have been able to identify. Now, uh, these challenges uh, are contained other the following key points, which you can see on the screen. However, I would also just be uh, uh, expatiating a little bit about uh, some of these uh, main problems that we have identified. Uh, so firstly, talking about uh, the limited governance capacity. Now, remember I said uh, something about uh, the user group being volunteer, uh, being based on volunteer run structure. And uh, this has really constrained our governance capacity and the level of support that we can offer to our members, uh, impacting our e effectiveness and responsiveness uh, to, the com to the common and global diverse needs of the community member. Another uh, key challenge that we identify uh, uh, that you can see on the slide is uh, the common needs. Now, we also uh, discover that there is a struggle to devise solution that cater to the common needs identified uh, within the Wikimedia and education community, which is also reflecting a gap in the collective problem solving. Now, uh, another uh, major problem that we uh, discovered is the complex challenges in global education. Now, the evolving landscape, especially with the advent of AI, has also present some complex challenges that our current uh, framework uh, may not have effectively addressed and which also af affects global open education programs both within and outside of the movement. Now, uh, another problem we discovered is on how uh, we have not effectively addressed uh, the uh, implementation of a diverse and sustainable program. So uh, over time, we'll face difficulties in rolling out diverse, inclusive, and sustainable uh, education-related Wikimedia programs and uh, activities, right? So uh, some of the key limitations that we identify based on the discussions we were having uh, include inadequate numbers of adaptable training modules across different languages, and also getting access to resources that's um, aligned with local education curriculum. And another is about uh, the limited or um, inadequate uh, opportunities for members to enhance their pedagogical skills using all Wikimedia projects as an open education resources. And also uh, the insuff insufficient or uh, continuous funding uh, 
being made available for um, education related Wikimedia programs. Now, these are the uh, main problem that we have identified that uh, at um, that we have identified as a result of engaging in series of consultation. Now, by articulating these issues, we aim to also set a clear di direction for addressing them uh, by applying key principles and also objectives in order to ensure our efforts are effective and impactful in overcoming them. Now, it's not just about getting the problem, but we also thought about um, how to change uh, this problem. What could be the solution? How can we propose solution uh, to change this narrative? Now, one thing we did as part of the TOC was to also identify key principles uh, that will guide and serve as a benchmark for evaluating our solution, for evaluating our proposed action. And uh, this takes me to the next slide. Yes. Yeah, so uh, if you look at the slide, you will see that uh, we've identified about five principles, right? And uh, one of the, the first principle being open knowledge sharing. So uh, we also want to ensure that in um, proposing any action, we are also able to ensure that the action is, uh, is considered as an objective or strategy that address uh, the identified problem that also helps to facilitate open access to high quality education resources. So uh, we also hope that these resources should be freely av available or restricted by location, affiliation, or financial barriers. So one key principle was uh, open knowledge sharing in whatsoever action we want to propose. Another was um, collaboration and networking. Uh, this uh, means that the principle should enable collaboration and networking in the sense that it creates an environment where sharing experience and promoting openness inspires content growth and contributors engagement, and also uh, inspire community members to think about uh, programs, wiki, uh, education-related Wikimedia programs that would provide a pedagogical experience uh, for both the learners and even uh, teachers or educators that they want to involve in our uh, programs. Now, another principle was uh, accessibility and inclusivity. Now, uh, we also want to ensure that whatsoever uh, action we are proposing, it helps our programs and events to strive for balanced representation and transparent decision making, which include every individual fairly. So we want uh, this action to um, have uh, an element of accessibility and inclusivity. Another principle is about sustainability. Now, uh, this is very important because uh, based on all the consultation we are having, we kept um, getting the feedback around how to ensure that our programs are not only impactful, but they are sustainable. And uh, for this principle, we want to have activities that will follow a clear plan uh, for long-term projects and community maintainers. Then uh, we also thought about another key principle of ownership. Now, uh, it's not just about carrying uh, out uh, education-related Wikimedia programs, but we want the individuals that have been trained or learners that have been involved in our programs and activities to be empowered to take ownership of this learning and also contribute to the Wikimedia project. So uh, some of the feedbacks we are getting from uh, members who we engaged was that uh, even though they had tried their best to ensure that after the training, uh, the participants still uh, continue to contribute, they oftentimes uh, don't really uh, find it very easy to track. So uh, that makes these principles 
uh, uh, a benchmark for evaluating our proposed action. Next slide. Now we have um, identified the main problem. We've also talked about the key principle. And uh, like I said, the key principle should guide the uh, proposed action. Now, in order to move forward in the light of everything we've identified for the needs, the challenges, uh, we expect that the thematic hub of the Wikimedia and education movement must take some action. And these actions are uh, like I call them, very concrete and uh, concrete action, which would help to address some of uh, the challenges that I have uh, identified earlier. Now, if you look on the slide, uh, you will see uh, some of these key action. Now, the first is to employ staff to ensure sustainability across short, medium, and long-term objectives. Because uh, we believe that if we have uh, staff in place, if we have um, someone to uh, provide the necessary support uh, as that when necessary, then it would also help us ensure that the community feels supported and also uh, enable sustainability across the different kinds of programs or initiatives that we are likely to come up with. Another is about providing consistent capacity building and mentorship opportunity focused on Wikimedia as a pedagogical tool. Now, this is another key uh, action uh, that we hope would um, address the challenges that we have identified. Now, uh, this came as uh, an action uh, based on some of the uh, responses we are getting from the focus group discussion, uh, and also based on the literature review we carried out, uh, which has um, centered Wikimedia projects um, majorly on, um, mostly on editing, and also focusing majorly on just Wikipedia, and not uh, the sisters projects. Another uh, key action that we should take as part of the objective is to develop a repository of open education resource for global use of Wikimedia in open education practice. Now, over time, we've heard uh, community members always uh, talking about the need to have a single repository uh, that would host, uh, that would showcase, um, that would showcase uh, examples of programs that have been carried out in other spaces and also help them learn how to adapt uh, these programs in, uh, to their own um, local context, right? So uh, another key action was to uh, improve technical tools. Now, uh, this is also important so as to help uh, improve the way we uh, report our education-related Wikimedia programs. Now, um, members, we are also talking about how they can improve uh, their qualitative reports for programs that, or for projects that they have carried out, and also improve uh, the quantitative outcome, or uh, yes, the qualitative outcome of some of the projects that they have carried out. So, uh, and also, uh, this leads to uh, the second part of the action, which says to enhance mechanism for continuous community engagement. Now, uh, we believe that if we have a mechanism that would enable community members to continue to engage, then they can always also just uh, share about uh, some of the challenges that they might find and also get access to another uh, member within the community who uh, may have some recommendation or solution that would help them address uh, some of the challenges that they are facing in their wiki education program. We also believe that community engagement uh, is key uh, because it will also help community members share about the experience of the programs that they are engaging in as it relates to uh, the Wikimedia and education community and programs. Another is about advocating for strategic partnership. 
now, not just advocating for uh, strategic partnerships uh, within the movement, but even outside of the movement, and also uh, for sustainable financial support. Now, because we believe that uh, the Wikimedia Foundation may not be able to uh, cater for all the uh, challenges that are always um, coming in different local in different uh, local contexts. We also believe that when we have strategic partnership, it would also help us uh, um, see other avenues, see other areas where we can explore for financial support and also uh, concerning policy development. We can also have a say in uh, different, uh, in key strategic meetings that has to do with uh, educational policies in our various countries. I will believe that this will help boost uh, Wikimedia's educational impact. Another key action is to promote a research network. And we want to believe that this research network would help explore the use of Wikimedia projects in education and also just help us share uh, best practices. Uh, and uh, we think this is very important because um, while Rocio was going over several literature review, uh, we discovered that even though we have some literatures that talks about uh, Wikimedia and education, it uh, really does not help identify uh, the pedagogical experience or also talk about the ped pedagogical skills that uh, both uh, uh, educators and learners can benefit from. So we believe that this is very important. Uh, next slide, expected impact. Now, uh, the impact of this action on the broader Wikimedia movements and open education uh, movements are expected to uh, do some of uh, the key uh, points that have been highlighted on the slide. So we believe that if these actions are taken, then uh, we should see a centralized support structure for the Wikimedia and education movement. We also believe that uh, this will help enhance global membership supports and also lead to improved engagement and increase in program success rates. Uh, we believe that this uh, expected impact would increase confidence in the use of Wikimedia projects for education-related programs and activities, and also help facilitate global access and exchange of best practices in education. Another uh, key uh, impact that this will lead to is to improve project outcomes and impact measurement, increasing community trust, and also um, boosting financial stability for the growth and impact of our programs within the open education uh, uh, sector. And uh, we expect that this uh, would strengthen collaboration and partnerships uh, both within and outside the education, uh, the wiki education community. Now, uh, it would also be interesting to talk about the societal change. Now, uh, where does this action, this impact, take us to at, uh, the, uh, at the long um, term? I would uh, pass over the virtual mic to Rocio uh, to take us through uh, the expected long-term impact of this action. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next slide, please. Well, um, together with the specific impact that uh, Bukola just described, uh, we were uh, thinking also about the uh, long-term changes that we envision. That's why we call uh, to this slide uh, societal change. And from a long-term term perspective, uh, we look forward to continue uh, becoming a strong voice in the global open education movement from a wiki perspective. Um, this is probably one of the, the main uh, big 
change that we expect. It's like um, try to uh, become a strong uh, organization, a strong community, a strong voice in the field of open education. Um, this means, for example, reinforcing the integration of uh, Wikimedia activities into the global open education uh, initiatives and debate uh, or discussion also to participate into discussion that are taking place now uh, in the field of open education or that are taking place uh, in the intersection uh, between education and open technology, for example. At the same time, we expect to promote the enactment of a recognized, recognized group of educational leaders around the globe uh, who have the tools uh, to advocate for Wikimedia initiatives. Um, this means that uh, we don't want uh, a vertical uh, structure. Uh, we want uh, to um, to promote that different teachers and educators uh, from the different territories uh, that we have in our community have the tool to advocate for Wikimedia initiatives in their local context. Um, and last but not least, one of the important goals that we want to reach is to contribute to produce uh, evidence, as Bukola was uh, saying, uh, we want to contribute to the research field, producing evidence based on research about the challenges, opportunities, an impact of our project. As Bukola mentioned, uh, reviewing uh, the, the contemporary literature about education, uh, open education, and technology, uh, we saw that sometimes uh, the literature that refers to Wikimedia in um don't have uh, the 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 continuity and the representation comparing to other topics. So uh, it is very important to keep uh, producing evidence and keep um, being um, like a voice in terms of research too, and to base our decision making process uh, on uh, research evidence. But uh, next slide, please. Of course, that as we move forward with this transitional process, we expect to face different kinds of risks. So in the next few slides, we will describe some of these risks. And also, we will describe or present the strategies that we have in mind for mitigating their impact. So first of all, uh, we have endogenous risk. What is this? Endogenous risk uh, refers to those related to situations that could happen in the Wikimedia and education community. Um, on the other hand, with exogenous risk, we mean societal situations that go beyond the Wikimedia community. community but that maybe can affect our capacity to reach the goals that we uh, are proposing now. So among the endogenous situations that could make more difficult the success of this process, we think about, uh, for example, the unawareness of the transitional process um, to the hub. To the hub. Uh, on behalf of the community. This means, for example, to uh, like, we, we mean that there is, for example, a lack of knowledge about what is going on, uh, what uh, are the next steps, uh, what 
are the concrete impact that the transformation um, will have on the education and Wikimedia movement. Uh, or, for example, um, not to be updated about the TOC agenda. Those could be like a uh, risky situation in terms of uh, have the ambition level of participation that we want. And related to this situation, another risk is, uh, in fact, a low global, global participation uh, in the open call activity, in the public call activity, uh, that we that will be part of this transition. And another problem that we identify, another another uh, risk that we identify, could be related with difficulties in organizing this new model, in terms of, for example, defining the new roles, the new positions. Uh, and their function. And immediately I will uh, refer um, to the exogenous risk. Please, next slide, please. Thank you. Now then, regarding the external risk, we have different societal situations that can affect, for example, the funding. Uh, and as a result, they have capacity. Another issue uh, is the extremely changing of the digital society and the digital technology. So in this sense, we identified the risk of losing relevance and losing currency in this, uh, let's say, changing scenario. Not to be aware about the uh, many changes in terms of uh, educational perspective or in terms of technology development too. And finally, everything related to copyright, licensing, uh, intellectual property is both a potential, but at the same time can be an obstacle because uh, of course can affect the capacity of the hub to develop, for example, an open education uh, an open educational resources repository. If we don't have, if we don't find partnerships, or if uh, like main actors from the GLAM community are not aware about open license, we will probably have some trouble um, reaching our purpose. But um, together with the risk. We also identify uh, some strategies or procedures to mitigate them. Uh, next slide, please. So to mitigate the endogenous risk, right? The ones that are related to our uh, community. Um, the first thing to say is that uh, community engagement require having different types or different kinds of spaces to get involved with the TOC. And this is a key point. Uh, we really need to guarantee that there are uh, different types of environments or channels to get involved with the TOC. For example, through public calls, roundtable discussions, seminars, and workshops, workshops among others. And at the same time, it's, all, it's important to offer uh, different channels of communication, not just meta, but also, for example, telegram, newsletter, even email, uh, and coordinate the dissemination of this report at all levels and it's in all the territories. Finally, taking into account the principles of uh, the new infrastructure, we call, we made a call for the transparency of the whole decision-making process. We really believe that uh, uh, with transparency, we will uh, promote more engagement and more um, feasibility about the process. And regarding to, to, 
to end this presentation regarding the exogenous risk. Next slide, please. To mitigate the exogenous risk, we offer a set of strategies as, for example, administrate grants according to a previous prioritization process for some key areas and objectives. Um, that could be a, a solution or, or a contribution uh, in the case that we have uh, problems or issues regarding with the funding. We have to make sure that we cover the more critical areas uh, with a, of course, with a previous definition about them. Um, related to that, we suggest a strict annual budget planning uh, related to subjects and related also with uh, metrics and evaluation. Uh, make metrics and make evaluation a more continued process uh, in, in our development. Um, just uh, as, as you can see in the, in the screen, we need constant evaluation of the relevance and engagement of the activities led by the hub that, uh, that is uh, very linked with the risk that we identify about uh, losing accuracy or, or, or yeah, like losing sense in a, in a very digital changing scenario. So we need to evaluate constantly the relevance and the engagement of the community in our activities. Then uh, it's very important to keep promoting research as a tool, as a key tool for evaluating the main trends in the field of education and technology. This is a, a, a very important, uh, let's say, pendant task to continue developing um, in the next uh, in the next step. And also, continue that which is a is a topic. Uh, very, mm, very important uh, to many members of the community, considerate advocacy as a key part of the hub development to ensure the ability to face, for example, issues related to copyright, to intellectual property. Um, and finally, to ensure the availability of open educational resources by generating and promoting a partnership with key stakeholders related not only with the la with the GLAM sector but also with the academia, with the education, uh, and with the science sector in general. So, well, thank you very much uh, for listening to us. Uh, we really hope to hear uh, your thoughts. Uh, maybe your doubts or any comments that you want to share with us will be very appreciated to continue with this process. So let the discussion begin. Thank you very much, Bukola and Rocio. Um, that was a, a great presentation and um, I, I think it was a lot of really good good results in there. Um, I would love to open it up. We only have a couple minutes left, but if anyone has any uh, reflections or questions, um, I'd love to to have an opportunity for folks to share. I'm seeing a lot of thank yous in the chat. It's always a good sign. Any questions? Rushina, go ahead. Okay. Good evening. It's evening, yeah. Um, this is Rushina Kemi from Nigeria. Um, thank you, Bukola and Rusio, for the presentation. Nice one. So um what I don't really understand is um I'm trying to get it. Are we bringing together every education group in the community because I noticed we have um they're talking about EduWiki user group 
there's a Wikipedia education um, user group. Then we have um, um, the project um, reading Wikipedia in the classroom, which we always organize, uh, which many of us are certified trainers. So I really want to understand where is the meeting point, um, what's um, what exactly is um, the future for everything? Is it going to be together in a group so that we can keep advocating? Because um, from the trainings I've done, this is my second training I've done in Nigeria for teachers. I've trained about 90 teachers already. So from the trainings I've done in terms of reading Wikipedia, the importance of Wikipedia in education, I could see that um, it is um, very, very important, even more important than people see it around. So, it's um, the use of it, um, Wikipedia as an educational resource is extremely important in education today. Uh, I can tell you for free that the prices of books have gone really high, that many people won't be able to afford to buy books, in, you know, coming in times to come. So it is this educational resources that we have to resort to, you know, at the end of the day. So I'm trying to see where um, the meeting point is going to be. I'm trying to understand it. I've, I've not gotten that yet. Thank you. Yeah, I can maybe take this question because I think this is a, a bigger picture question than um, than just the results that Bukola and Rocio just, uh, just presented. So I think the idea behind um, creating this potential education hub is an opportunity for different program leaders around the world to get support and um, uh, networking and collaboration and a community of practice with other education program leaders. So each individual program would still be running your own programs in your own countries. Um, you know better than anyone else um, how your program is most effective. You understand the educational systems in your countries. Um, and so the idea behind this would be then a centralized place where some of the help support resources and the sort of community building and things like that advocacy the things that um, the Bukola and Rocio just shared are better done at a sort of centralized level so this would be sort of putting together a system whereby we would have a centralized support structure that would enable individual program leaders all over the world to run their programs more effectively um, so you would still sort of do all of the program work yourself. This would just be sort of a central resource and support structure um, to help you in those those efforts. Um, and you know, I think there's still a lot to be done um, before between this research and when that actually happens. Um, and there's a lot up in the air of sort of how this will happen, and it's wrapped up in the definition of hubs and the movement charter, and there's still a lot sort of up in the air and moving forward. But I think the work that Bukola and Rocio have done here and the work that we did in the phase one research report that Cornelius wrote to both really show that I think there's an interest and a need um, for this sort of central organizing community in the education space. Any other questions or comments? I know we're over time now, so if you have to jump off to another uh, event, please feel free to do so. Okay, well, it looks like there's not other comments or questions, so um, I will wrap this up by um, by saying again a, a giant thank you to Bukola and Rocio for all of their hard work on this, um, and especially to everyone who participated in their research um, that was necessary and needed, and we're really glad to, to have your voice. And um, I encourage you, if you have additional thoughts as you're reflecting on this, to leave them on the talk page of the research report on Meta. All right, with that, I will wrap up the meeting and thank you all for joining us today. Um, I will be posting the recording to YouTube shortly. So thank you so much. All right, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.